everybody. All right, this is the last lesson. Congratulations, you have made it. Okay, so in this episode, we're gonna be going over placement. We're gonna finish up those ideas. We're gonna go into resonance, and then we're gonna talk about tone and quality. And then for the hopefully last time, I do teach privately, so if you do want to take voice lessons with me, both speaking or singing, you can shoot me an email right here. All right, let's get started. Okay, so going back to placement, do you remember last lesson when we tried to keep that chest voice on the lighter side? We're gonna kind of be doing that same thing when we go up and blend over into our presagio. We wanna keep that same lightness when we blend up into it. The last thing that we want is to have that stereotypical falsetto kind of swallowed tone. That is not what we want at all. So if you're finding you are having that falsetto -y kind of sound, try to bring that up a little bit higher into this place. Like I said, we've been talking about this quite a bit, these four lessons. This is the most important part right here. Try to bring that up and out of this like kind of locked in place right here. Typically that falsetto -y sound is because you have, uh, you're kind of straining a little bit to get those sounds out. We want to relax these muscles just a little bit and then bring them up and bring the airflow up into this area. So when you're in this falsetto -y kind of sound, what I want you to do is I want you to practice just bringing this tone to different places. It doesn't matter if it's a good sound or a bad sound, especially when you hear it in your head. Because if you listen to what it sounds like in your head, more often than not, it's not gonna be the right tone. So try things that you think won't work. Try things that you think will work. The only way you're gonna know in your own head is if you're doing it wrong, is if it hurts. If it hurts down in this throat area, stop what you're doing and try to figure out a way to make it not hurt. I say hurt and I kind of mean like straining. So if you kind of are like tensing up a little bit, just relax, relax those muscles. So what I mean by playing with this sound a little bit is kind of like this. So what that exercise does is it helps us find the resonance of the tone, the proper resonance. And I strongly encourage you to record yourself and listen back to this because what you'll find is that what you thought may have not worked actually did in fact work. And so if you record yourself and you do that voice, you can kind of hear where you were and be like, oh, that was a very feminine sound. Let me go back and try that again. But you can't do that if you don't record yourself. So if you don't like recording yourself, get over it. <laughs> if you're still having trouble finding this feminine quality, another thing that we can do to kind of throw this voice into this resonating chambers here is by using more air. By using more air, we need to create more space for it. So it helps us get into these pockets right here. So when you're doing that kind of flux tone, going back and forth, trying to find the right place, play with the amount of airflow as well. Use that diaphragm to kind of really get this air going, push it all out, and you'll kind of feel, suddenly you'll have a little bit more open space right here. And finally, we come to timbre and quality. Now, this is one of those things where it's kind of difficult to help you without hearing you. Because timbre and quality are so unique to every voice that what you do correctly to find a feminine sound might not be at all what I'm doing. So let me explain. So timbre is the color of the tone and female voices have a different timbre on the same note as a male voice. Let me explain with my guitar. So this is the note A. And this is the same note, A.
Do you hear how one of those notes has a little bit more of a twangier sound? That's what timbre is. It's the color of the tone. It's the same note, it's the same amount of hertz, but it's what the waveform looks like if you want to get analytical. So it could be like this, it could be like a little more jagged. It's the waveform of the same length. So a feminine sound has a different timbre than a male sound. What I'm getting at is, this is about where we part ways. Because at this point, you have all of the tools to find a feminine sound, but the only way that you're going to achieve it is by practicing and experimenting. Your voice is so unique to everyone else's that to find a feminine quality in it requires years of hard work and dedication. This is not going to be an overnight thing. And I feel like those of you who have watched this far in the series know that. So experiment with the way that your mouth is shaped, with the way, how narrow it is, how wide it is, how high your soft palate feels, how low it feels, how much air are you using? Where does the tone come from? Figure out what be works best for your own voice because every voice is so unique. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Um, I had fun with this series. This was a good one to do. Like, it felt right. You know what I mean by that? It just felt like it was the right avenue to go to. So thanks for everyone uh, to, who commented and who messaged me and was saying, hey, can you do something on singing? And it took me a little while to do it. I had to get my self-confidence up, but I'm glad I did it. And I really do hope it was helpful to all of you. Um, you can email me if you have questions or if you do want to take private lessons. And yeah, all right. So I really thank you all so much for watching and uh, for being here all the way until this last second. Thank you all so much and I will see you at the next one. All right.